Pero ngayon, naaalala ko na ulit. Pero ngayon, naaalala ko na ulit. In Tagalog, that means, but now, I am remembering again. I am planted eyes. I am a button nose. I am brown skin. I am morena. I am kapwa. I am Filipina. And I am proud to be who I am. Val Roxas is a Filipina-American artist, writer, poet, and the founder of Lunas, a healing practice dedicated to helping kids of immigrants achieve their soul goals. She helps those who work together with her clarify what it is they really want out of this life by guiding them toward tangible goals while also walking them through an invisible journey of internal healing. What I loved about Val from the moment I first met her in the digital space is that you immediately felt who she was. You felt her soul shine through and it made accompanying her on her journey a meaningful experience. One where I immediately felt a strong connection of Kapwa. What's cool is that when I first spoke with her, she was the one who educated me about that special word we have in the Filipino language, Kapwa. The inherent sense of knowing someone. I see you because I see myself in you. Do you know what Kapwa means? Kapwa, no. Kapwa is a Tagalog term for the shared self. Hmm. Yeah, you're Kapwa, I'm Kapwa. In me, I see you, in you. I see me. Wow. And then literally the next week, when I got to meet and interview Crystal Fabella for the first time in New York City, Crystal used that same word to describe the Filipina on the Rise community. Yeah, it's that feeling. Sister, I know you. I I don't know you, but But I I know know you. you. Yes. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) That's exactly it. We're dealing with so much stuff. When you just see someone that kind of like understands your struggle that can also uplift you. That's literally like what Kapwa is. Yeah. I just learned that word the other day. Seeing yourself in the other. It's so funny because before we even articulate that or like we define it, how strong is our indigenous instincts, right? Yeah. To be looking for that. For yeah. each other to be yeah. like magnetized and creating that even with societal expectations and colonization and the western world and capitalization we're still finding kapwa there are no coincidences there is only kapwa so if i may i'd like to go back to the interview so you can meet our beautiful soul sister val roxas i just want to say really quickly you know i'm so grateful to have you here to walk this journey with me because i've been tasked and honored with the opportunity to sub in as a host for Filipino on the Rise, which is like this incredible platform that's bringing our stories to the forefront as a podcast. And it's really giving us a place to share what we're about and what we have been about for so long. Yeah. And then, you know, to walk through that with me, it's such an honor, but I just want to give, you know, our listeners as well as people who are watching on YouTube, the chance to get to know who you are. (sighs) Man, the question of like, who you are is all is such a it, it always feels like such a loaded question. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a big question, right? On an identity level, I like to think of myself as a creative, right? An artist. I am the founder of Lunas. What Lunas is is a healing practice dedicated to help people undergo intergenerational healing, specifically through the lens of being a kids of immigrants and also working on a specific project, right? Like I work with people around what their soul goal is. Yeah. And I think it's really important to set goals, to have a direction, right? But what the soul goal more so focuses on is your becoming, Mm -hmm. not being so fixated on what your goal is. Like it's there to be run towards, right? But also being open to it, being more interested in the process of your discovery while you work towards the project rather than the project itself, the destination itself. Like, Obviously, it's, it's about the journey. And I know that's cliche, but I think there's a reason why things are cliche. Yeah. I think there's a, there's a deep reverence that we need to have for cliches because they're cliche for a reason. And a lot, a lot of cliches are rooted in love, you know? So yeah. I also moved back home six months ago after finding out my dad got diagnosed with cancer. As much as that's like a heavy thing to say, I feel like there's been a lot of healing around it. And in hindsight, I've learned just like how everything is a blessing in disguise. If it wasn't for my dad getting diagnosed with cancer, I don't think I'd be on this journey of wanting to rebuild my relationship with them and wanting to reconnect with them on a such deeper level that requires so much of walking into 
the pain of your childhood, you know, <laughs> going back home is like my deep internal mission right now and like really cultivating a foundation, you know, a new foundation with my parents and a new a new garden, you know, to yeah. do plant seeds together. Because my whole life, I feel like I ran away from myself and them and being Filipina. It's almost like the way you're approaching YouTube, right? Like you're creating Filipino American creatives yeah. to discover your roots, right? Yeah. And I just think it, it's, it's so just like on point that I'm building Luna's as I'm rebuilding my relationship with my parents. Were you expecting that when you moved home that you would be confronted with so many things and that it would take <laughs> you on this journey and brought you so many gifts? as hard as they may have been, you know, maybe the kind of gifts that you weren't wanting. Did you expect to kind of have this abundance of experience unfold before you? I was more focused on it being hard than I was expecting the fruits of that labor, right? Like what aspects of it were going to be hard for you? I just knew that I was going to have to wrestle or confront a lot of things that pained me around my parents, you know, yeah. because I feel like, I don't know if you felt like this, but I think a lot of Filipinas have felt like this. But yeah. when I was growing up, there was this like combination of deep love and yeah. deep hate for my parents. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so it's like, yeah, when you feel hatred, I feel like for anybody, right? But especially your parents. Yeah. There's a guilt and shame that like that lives in your body from having that hate. Right. Because mm -hmm. it, it's confusing. Yeah. It's like, how can you love people so deeply but hate them at the same time? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I had to unlearn and unpack and really discover and learn our history to recognize why that pain was so in me, you know, because yeah. it's so much deeper than just like my parents saying no to me or like not letting yeah. me go out and like party, you know, and yeah. like telling me to be a certain way. It's a whole history of like colonialism. And I feel like learning our history is such a powerful tool mm -hmm. for our healing journey. Why is so much of what it is that you're doing connected to the soul? I feel like a lot of us, we grow up being taught who we should be, how we should act, yeah. what gender we should be, how and what we should be doing, right? It's yeah. like these set of rules of like, what's good and what's bad, right? Mm -hmm. This binary way of living and thinking. And we've been indoctrinated, right? Yeah. And we have never taken the time to sit down and think, what do I believe? And to ask like the things that we're taught, like, is it even true? And yeah. I think that there's so much power in like inquiring. We're so caught up in like that survival mode, right? Uh -huh. And that thinking, feeling loop that yeah. we don't take the time to even sit with beliefs and what they even mean to us. Do they even nourish our souls? For me, spirituality is what is. It's just truth. And I don't think you need to be religious to have a spiritual practice. Sorry, if I just yeah. may interrupt there. It's so interesting that you say that because I've always felt, I don't necessarily believe this, but I've always felt that spirituality was something so beyond. It's something that's otherworldly. It's not here in the here and now. But what you're pointing towards is that this is a spiritual experience. I think if we were really to actually practice grounding into reality, yeah. we would see that it actually is bigger beyond and otherworldly because this universe is so vast, right? We don't know what we don't know. If you stop and thought about the space in between you and me, in between the earth and yeah. what, like wherever the universe ends, if it ends, right? Like yeah. that is like 99.99999% of <laughs> this world, right? And yeah. we're constantly focused on like what we can touch and what we can obtain and like the material world, right? And it's like, do we ever think about like how vast the in-between is, the invisible is? Like that is what is true though. That is, that's what is. That is otherworldly and scary and frightening and beautiful. We we're talking about manifestation and it's like manifestation is bringing in what you don't know yet. That's what spirituality is to me. And that's what I equate to the soul goal, right? Yeah. It's like, who would you be without your thoughts, your beliefs? the things that people told you that you should be. It's like, what goal can be birthed from that, right? When you sit there, like, what goal comes up from that place? Why first generational? Mm. Like, why is that specifically so important to you? I think it's because it's my story, you know? And it's like, who's the better, like, candidate for what I've been through than someone who's been going through the same thing as me, yeah. right? Because we have shared experiences. So much of what it is that you're doing there's so much 
wisdom in it. Mm. Like in terms of the things that you're able to see in the world and the connections that you're making to the soul, to the present moment, to how that can relate to then our goals and the greater purpose of what it is that we're meant to do on this planet. And I think that that's what is so beautiful about experiencing Lunas and your journey is that you get to learn by doing together, especially as a Filipino American, I felt so alone in my journey. And I think that's why, you know, it was Crystal that I discovered and you. As I started to develop Filipino American Creative and go on this journey of discovering our culture, you two were the first digital figures that I came across mm. that I was like, oh my God, I'm not alone. <laughs> I need community. I, I mean, this whole experience is about discovering my community. Yeah. And what better way to do that than with women who are also on the same journey? Yeah. That's what is so beautiful about working together with you and experiencing you, whether online or in person or, you know, in whatever capacity they get to experience Val and Lunas, mm -hmm. is that they get to go through the journey of healing together with you mm -hmm. as you're exploring and discovering your own journey. Mm -hmm. And that camaraderie, I think just knowing that you, we're not alone in this, Absolutely. I think is, is yeah. everything. So easy to feel like we're alone. That's the mind, <laughs> the ego. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then when you let that go, you're like, oh, I can actually connect yes. on a deeper, way deeper level than I yes. even ever thought was possible. That's it for this very special episode. If you liked it and would like to hear the complete interview with Val, head on over to the Filipina on the Rise podcast. Also, if you were moved by this episode, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Everything you do helps to support this journey of discovering my lost Philippine heritage. I look forward to seeing you for next week's episode here on Filipina American Creative. Till then, paalam. Goodbye.